Okay. Um, hi, this is I'm Miss Oza. Um, I'm a seventh grade nonfiction studies teacher, and I'm really excited to do my first book talk um, for you all. I read Guys Read True Stories. You might be familiar with the Guys Read anthologies um, that John Shishka started. I think a couple years, maybe five, six years ago. Um, but this is his first anthology of true stories, which um, many seventh graders will tell you are what a lot of people call nonfiction. Um, so this is of the nonfiction genre. Um, and I wanted to read a little bit of it for you because this is, so because this is an anthology, it's a couple of different short stories, um, all nonfiction. And there's various authors, um, Steve Schenken, who wrote Port Chicago 50, um, if you haven't seen Miss A's book talk, you should, um, wrote one of the first stories in here, and, one, and a part of the story, a part of that story is what I'm going to share with you right now. So this is called Sahara Shipwreck by Steve Schenken. Like many great survival stories, this one starts with a shipwreck. To be precise, it starts with the America Brig Commerce slamming into a reef off the coast of West Africa on the moonless night of August 28, 1815. The ship's side cracked wide open and seawater poured in. The good news is Captain James Riley and his 11-man crew loaded a lifeboat with barrels of water, bread, and salted meat and made it to shore. The bad news is they just wrecked on the western edge of the Sahara Desert. Also unfortunate, shortly after sunrise, a band of spear-wielding bandits spotted the sailors, robbed them, and carried one off as a slave. Riley and his remaining crew escaped to sea in their rickety lifeboat. They had few bottles of water, a few pieces of salt pork, and a sack of soggy figs. <laughs> Seven days later, they were still in the boat. They'd hoped to, to spot a passing ship. No luck. The nails holding their vessel together were working loose in the waves, and the boat was coming apart beneath them. Their legs were underwater, their upper halves roasting in the sun. The food was gone. The water was gone. Abandoning hope of rescue, Riley and the men paddled to shore and collapsed on a patch of wet sand. Exhausted, starved.